Good afternoon, or I'm sorry, good morning. I'm so glad to see all of you here today. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to spend some time with us and talk about Workday. Uh, thank you for that. Um, we have a, an exciting agenda for you today. We're going to hear a little bit from our executive sponsors. Uh, we will talk about Workday and um, some updates since our launch on July 1. And we will talk about what's next. Uh, that's our nice experience team. And then, of course, we will spend some time answering your questions. So thank you again for being here. I am going to uh, pass it to Matt Hall, uh, one of our executive sponsors, and then we'll go to Gerald, and then we'll go to Provost Johnson. Hi, Sherry. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, congratulations in order. This is a Herculean effort, and it's absolutely extraordinary what we pulled off. And, and what I want to say is, is I, I was an undergraduate, and I used to read the Tao Che Ching with Lao Tzu, and he says, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. And we've taken that first step. But this is a story in three parts. You're at the end of Act One. We've deployed it. Now we're in, in a, a chaotic mode of learning. There's a new technology you have to learn. There's new business processes, new ways of doing things we've always done. And that's, that's, that's a cost of doing business, but it's gonna be a cost well worth paying, getting the overhead down so that we can realize the efficiencies and the benefits within Workday and in the overarching governance of SET and our, our next experience center is gonna be fantastic. That's act two, we're learning what we don't know. There's emergent things that happen. Things will spike, it'll normalize, and it'll fade off. And then Act 3, January to February, Act 3 is a normalization. A lot of the issues we have with whether it's hiring, whether it's putting in an expense voucher or making a purchase, we will have learned. So we have to experience this together. We're all on one team. We're all working towards the same end of this, leveraging this technology and this new way of doing business on behalf of the university. Um, one of the things I like to say is, how do you know someone's a pilot? Well, they'll tell you. So I'm going to tell you, I spent years flying Cessna 172s. That's a type of an air, aircraft. I want to talk about rental cars and airplanes. And, and how does that relate to Workday and SET? Um, when I was flying these 172s, I knew exactly where all the controls were for the aircraft. I knew the yoke. I knew the flaps. I knew everything. I, I could do it, in, do it blindfolded. I still use checklists, but I really could fly that plane. For various reasons, the state agency I worked for in Tennessee said, no, Matt, you're going to learn how to fly a Piper Archer. And the first time, you know, plane's a plane, right? You get in, you, you land it, you take it down a runway, you, you roll it, you, you take off. That Piper Archer was configured completely different than my 172. I didn't know where things were. I didn't know where the flaps were. They, it was just, it was a strange animal. And it, the cognitive overhead to move from that one aircraft to another aircraft, or both airplanes do the same thing, but their cognitive overhead is high. So once I learned the control surfaces of that aircraft, it was smooth sailing and smooth flying. Same thing if you've ever been in a rental car. You know, when you have your own car configured, your Bluetooth set up, your seat's in a nice place, vents are pointing in the right direction, you know where the air conditioning buttons are. You get in that rental car and it's, it's cognitive overload. It is a lost moment until it isn't. And I think that's what we're feeling right now is the technology change is a learning change. So what I encourage you to do in the same way we did in the aviation industry is have a pilot sitting next to you. If you can get someone to help you through your transactions, help you through the moment of doing the work, experiential learning is going to be really beneficial. And Sherry, Robin, the Huron team, Maureen and Misty, Rebecca, Bernice can all help us do these things together. So we're in it together. I want to thank you again. And I want to turn it over to my next colleague. I believe you said Gerald's up next, Sherry, and, and I'll take it from there. But thanks, everybody. It's a wonderful experience, and I think we're going to enjoy this, especially when we get normalized next year. Thanks, Matt. I, I'll just echo all that you've said. I, I had the benefit of attending the Nakubo conference this past Monday and Tuesday, and everything Matt said is spot on. We're in a, a, a mode right now where things seem a bit chaotic and, and things seem out of sort. But I heard a quote from the general session, plenary session speaker, uh, Lauren Am Amondi, I think her name was, and she said it best. She says, disruption is not chaos. And institutions that are afraid to address some of the issues that are front and center for them oftentimes find themselves settling. 
So I'm paraphrasing there, but that was very, very powerful for me to sit there listening to that because we had just gone through this change. So let me also echo to say thank you, uh, first and foremost, and congratulations. This is not an easy task. We are, I was reminded just yesterday that we are one of the largest institutions in the nation and we're leading in this space. At the same conference this week, I can't tell you how many people came up to me to say, we heard that you went live. If there's anything that you need for us to help you with, please reach out. Um, we are more than happy to share our stories, our experiences, our highs and our lows. Even some of them that have gone live several years ago have offered their support. I also represent UCF on a Workday Research One Institution National Advisory Group around users of Workday. And quite frankly, we meet once a month. And as I sit there and listen to folks and the giving encouragement and the things that we're addressing, as I share that with them, where we are right now is pretty normal in a change of our size. And I'll give you a couple of examples that gives me both encouragement and also kind of buoys me on a regular and consistent basis is how the team members are coming together. The camaraderie, the way in which we're tackling issues, the responses that we're giving to individuals, the timely responses, and just the feedback that we're getting. Now, one thing I don't wanna ever do is to make thing, things seem as they're not. There are some things we have to work through. There are things around security roles. There are things around training that individuals are still requesting. We will continue to do that in the, into the foreseeable future. Training, professional development, handholding, if you will, is something that we are committed to doing. But we're also grateful for your patience. This is not easy. Um, when, we, when we look at our PeopleSoft system, our PeopleSoft system was so highly customized. So we built it over time, over 20 years. And now we're moving to a system that will allow us to do things in a more flexible and nimble way. As the chief financial officer here at the institution, people will say, well, we did this so that the central areas can be um, afforded uh, ease in their job. I would like to just close my remarks by saying we're all in this together as one UCF. We have a system that we have purchased that I call it a Mercedes. And quite frankly, I think we need to sit in the Mercedes and drive. We had a Lexus probably in PeopleSoft, but we had it configured in a way that really didn't push against what we need to operate the institution and manage it effectively. And quite frankly, it was, in my humble estimation, configured such that we could report back to the state. What we have done is to create now an atmosphere of transparency, ownership, accountability, and eventually the empowerment that's needed for individuals to own what they do and become subject matter experts and by so doing, lift this institution to higher heights. So as Matt said, we are now at phase one. We just got to this phase, we're at phase one. We're gonna be pushing through this. As an executive sponsor, I'm here um, to make sure that this is a success. And if there's anything that I can do to assist you, please let me know, um, let the team members know, and let's do this together as one UCF. We're gonna get through this and we're gonna be much better off for it. That uh, I'll stop there and turn it over to our illustrious Provost Johnson for his comments. Thank you, Gerald and Matt, for, for your comments. Um, you know, I would describe PeopleSoft as maybe a dinosaur or a Rube Goldberg machine, or maybe Frankenstein's monster, something kludged and patched over the years. And when you're an expert in a system like that, uh, you can make it work, sort of despite its shortcomings. Workday is a Mercedes as Gerald likes to describe it. And I'm looking forward to watching us get it fully functional. The point I would like to make stated or implied in both of their comments is that, that we are at the point we expected to be and should be in this process, right? As Matt said, going from act one to act two, um, a whole bunch of work is done before go live. And then a whole bunch of work remains to be done as the community starts using and testing the system after go live. And that's the way it is with the implementation of big systems like that. So when you run into problems and issues, please understand that that's the way this is intended to work. 
that may sound odd to you, but these systems are too big and too complicated. And organizations like ours are too big and too complicated for any organization to have everything perfect before go live. Go live is the point at which it's good enough for us to use it and work through the, the errors and setup or security roles or workflows that remain. So that said, it can be really frustrating when you are trying to use it and you run into a problem. I would just ask that you don't panic. And this is why we have various help systems, some of which you'll hear about today. Um, we've had, as I understand it, a couple of thousand so far identified issues to be addressed. Well over half of them have been addressed, fixed. The others are being um, taken care of at a good clip. So these first few weeks will be an exciting time of learning and fixing. Please be positive about it as best you can. And please have patience if you don't feel positive. I like to end just by thanking the incredible team that's brought us to this point. So many people worked so hard and longer hours than is really reasonable um, to get us to the July 1st go live. That team is a bunch of wonderful people. And I'm very grateful for what you've done. Many of this team has now transitioned into people who are the expert help for the rest of the campus. And I thank you for that as well. For the campus as a whole, I ask you to work the system, help us get it right. Um, make sure you know you part, your part, and learn what you need to. Let us know when something needs improvement. I think this is a wonderful transition for the university. I've been here forever. Um, I remember the transition to PeopleSoft. It was no joy. So far, this looks to me like it's going better than that one. Um, and it will be great fun, I think, in Matt's Act 3 for us to feel like we really know where we are and where we're going, and most of all, how to do our jobs. So thank you all, and I'll turn it back to the team. Thank you so much um, to our executive sponsors for those, those kind and inspiring words. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Workday. And um, first and foremost, 20 days ago, uh, we went live. And you all know that. I know many of you have been uh, challenged by some of that. And I know our, our uh, sponsors shared uh, some of the challenges we've been having and that they were expected. We do want you to know that our number one goal you know, here on the Workday team is to make sure that everyone in this university can effectively do their their jobs so that we can certainly move things through the system so the team is working diligently to make that happen i know that there are some things that have been challenging and and like matt said some of it is just learning the new system and and certainly that is a, a big task for many so really appreciate uh, your patience as we go through this really appreciate uh, you know, all of the folks that worked on Workday, um, as, as it was certainly a large uh, number, and, um, and they are still working on Workday. So thank you for that. Next slide. So here's a little bit about how we got there. First, I'd like to share a little bit about the name. So our friend and colleague, Jessica Sheck, back in 2020, won the contest, the naming contest for the project. And that, uh, and the name became Night Vision. And the one thing I like about the name Night Vision is the word night, of course, you know, that really you know, signifies UCF. You know, it is unique to UCF. And that vision is the vision for the future, um, the path to greater operational efficiency, uh, effectiveness, improved transparency and accountability, and really having that data available. So um, just, uh, you know, it is a great name because of uh, of how it aligns with not only who we are, but where we want to be. Next. <clears throat> and so on the journey, we've had, you know, we've had well over 100 employees, um, many, many of those, more than half of those dedicated to the project. Um, it's been more than two years for many of those folks. Uh, more than a year and a half for others. Uh, it was a very aggressive timeline and a tremendous amount of hard work. And, and there were literally hundreds of employees beyond the project team who had to provide input, had to do testing, um, and certainly thousands of people that are now learning the system. So it has been quite the journey and, um, and we really are so grateful to the, 
the support we've had from leadership as well as to the staff who've really put their heart and soul into getting us to where we are. And of course, our goal uh, aligned with our, uh, our university's mission, mission is to unleash the potential of our greatest asset, and that is our employees. So all of our faculty, all of our staff, we want to make sure that, um, that that Workday is just one more tool that we use um, it, to, to focus on uh, the success of our faculty and staff in serving our students and the research goals of the university. Next slide. So back, um, gosh, two years ago, we, we developed the guiding principles for the program. So some of these uh, guiding principles, I just wanted to come back to them briefly, share with you how we, you know, we did work to align with those principles and to deliver, um, deliver the product according to the principles. So first, uh, the principle, uh, the first principle was simplification, using that out of the box functionality, um, leveraging the business processes that are part of the Workday product itself, following best practices in higher ed, and, um, and also looking at consistent business processes across all of the colleges and units. We went from having many, many different ways to do things to now having a, a much smaller number of ways to do things. And we are still working through those. We will be refining them over, um, over the next year, as, as Matt indicated earlier. But having that one unified system for both HR and finance, having that data available is definitely um, you know, part of that simplification, not having to have so many tools to use uh, to get what you need. Next is better serviced. So, and I said next is better service because next is part of that best better service. So we, you will hear quite a bit from Kathleen Winningham, Willing, Winningham after I, um, I speak and uh, having that tool that can be user-friendly interface. And I know many of you who are learning the system, uh, you know, may feel like that the user friendliness is, is a little bit on the fence right now, but there is a lot of advantage to having that, um, that mobile compatibility. And um, we're hoping that you are finding it a little bit easier to navigate than PeopleSoft. And certainly we did, we are following best practices in developing the service model. So um, I look forward to Kathleen talking about that in a few minutes. So measurable results, you know, we did track the project, measured where we were throughout the project. But more importantly, as we as we went live, we could look at those analytics around who's using it, what processes might be getting stuck, where do we need to provide support, where how many, what are the trends we're seeing in the cases, what are the the things that our business centers um, may be having challenges with. So really looking at how can we improve not only how we're serving the community, but but the processes themselves. And then, of course, transparency and inclusivity. So, we having these information sessions, having the open forums, the the website, the newsletters, um, the exchange sessions, which are primarily Q and A, and then also all of the learning opportunities and the learning catalog. That's really working to make sure that the whole community is included in in the learning opportunities and in understanding where we were along the journey, but now that we've gone live as well. And then we did engage the campus community advisory group um, and a communications network in order to broaden the, the, the information that gets out there and the input that we could get in for the system as we went live. And we will continue to get that input. That is very important to our continuous improvement. And then uh, customer confirmation and user experience sessions, that is where we brought folks in to use the system to help us with, um, with just making sure that we're getting some feedback along the way. And then accountability, we've had a great uh, group of leaders as part of our steering committee, our business owners council, our executive sponsors. We have a group of set champions. Those are uh, leaders uh, for the development of the, the next and the business center models. And uh, the, that group of leaders 
we're tasked with making sure that we're bringing a cross-functional group together, making sure we're serving the overarching university as we're going through this process. Um, and then making sure that you all have the opportunity to, um, to come and uh, come to forums like this, ask questions, and then uh, communicate with us either with campus surveys, feedback forms in the night vision, uh, email. Uh, we wanna make sure that you can ask questions and get those questions answered. So we are just getting started with Workday. So some things we've achieved, we've gone live, we've had the first payroll. Um, you can find your payslip in Workday now. Um, and then you know, we have 140 plus integrations that are live. We have several more that, that are uh, in the works. <clears throat> and just to highlight, this is just the beginning. So we do have biannual releases, and those releases are of enhanced functionality. Um, Workday, the company does listen to its customers and does make enhancements along the way. So we do expect every fall and every spring to have um, some additional functionality and or enhances to existing functionality that we will um, that will help us stay efficient and keep us in a modern system. So unlike a system that we, in the past we would purchase and then we would have to uh, maintain it our, ourselves and evolve it, or, you know, that system would evolve with us. Um, this is a cloud product. So Workday uh, has a whole R&D group. They get input from their clients across the country and across industries, and they do keep that product and, and move it forward so that we can leverage that um, when they roll out new functionality. So we do have some functionality that we have planned to roll out. So um, we've got some performance management functionality and some additional um, integrations and uh, some additional enhancements to the existing functionality we have in the system. That's all part of our rolling adoption. And um, as we move into an operational mode, you'll, you'll get, or we will provide updates and certainly some information on the website as to what things are coming, when they are coming and so on. We do wanna make sure that you all still have access to that support system. And you'll hear more about our Knights Experience team and uh, the learning resources, the training enhancements. We wanna make sure that if training, it, when we do an enhancement to the system, that the training is updated and that you all can, can um, add to your learning as we move forward. And our goal is continuous improvement. So making sure that we are providing what the organization needs to, to conduct the business of the, of the university and then also having that ever improving environment and, and really looking at it from a service standpoint, making sure that we're providing what you need. Next steps for Workday, uh, we are transitioning or we're transitioning to operations. So we are in this hyper care period right now where we are um, all hands on deck working to address any concerns that are brought to us from our users. And uh, we do have those acts that Matt mentioned earlier, uh, working through the immediate issues right now, and then planning out some longer term enhancements that may be needed as business processes are refined. We will be working with our business process owners that are out in our finance departments, our business centers and our colleges, as well as our um, our central HR office and next to develop the roadmap for our, our product as we move forward. Lessons learned. So we have learned a lot of lessons and um, many of those lessons uh, we want to make sure we're applying if we embark on another journey like this in the future, um, which we're hoping is not too soon. But uh, certainly there's lots of lessons we learned and we want to make sure we're collecting those from the various uh, constituent groups and documenting those and applying those, putting those in place for our, our, our next initiatives or for you know, the way we're operating the system. 
and then go moving into a continuous improvement mode. So making sure that we're continuously getting that feedback, looking at best practices, making adjustments if we need to, um, prioritizing those with our, our stakeholders and uh, making sure that, that you all are getting what you need. So next, it's what's next. So I am gonna pass it to Kathleen Winningham and uh, we'll talk a little bit about what's next. Good morning. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm excited to talk to you about the Knights Experience Team. Uh, you can see that I've underlined how the phrase actually came about being named. Um, I think it's fabulous, uh, but I like to remind people of this because one of the things that we do is abbreviate. Abbreviate's really easy, it's simple. So we refer to ourselves as next, but I want you to make sure that you take away from this that the word experience, which is in the middle of it, is really what we're, what our goals are and what I want to talk to you about and just how we shape that up. Uh, the five individuals you see here, um, including myself, we lead this team and we are all on this journey. We all have different levels of experience, um, but they all are incredibly talented in the areas that they're in. So I put these faces in front of you and the names, because if you have a question or if you have an idea, I want you to reach out to us because the only way we can know is to learn and to listen. And that's a really important thing for me is as, as we embark on this really Herculean effort of standing up something brand new and trying to make a mark, uh, we want to do so with making sure that we hear all the voices that we need to hear. So I thank you all so very much, you know, ahead of time um, for, for doing that and for being here, for spending a little time with us this morning. So as I, as I move into the next slide um, of what, when I give you our overarching purpose is our goal is to provide exceptional service, um, exceptional customer service and support to the UCF campus community. Now, yes, we are focused on HR and finance, but really, ultimately, it's, it's just about helping the person. Um, and we want to do the very best we can. And sometimes we don't hit that mark. I'm not going to lie to you. We're not going to be, we're going to be very transparent with you about what we've learned. You've heard every person before me talk about that. Um, but it is our purpose to provide that exceptional customer service and support because we want to help you do the best job you can and for us to achieve the goals that UCF has and as well as what you have for your business and what you need to do. Now, the one of the ways that we achieve our purpose is through our strategic partnerships. This is really important. And those gears are there and they really mean something. So as you see where we sit in the middle of next, we also have our central HR and finance teams. These are the subject matter experts that really understand the policies and procedures of how our HR and finance functions should work. And then we have our business centers, which support all of our faculty and our staff and our students um, and to ensure that their businesses are being met. And we sit in the middle to make sure that all of that things move along so that the central team can do what they need to do in establishing policies and procedures, understanding um, you know, what's happening out into the, the landscape of those particular disciplines. And we also want to help the business centers because that's front line. That's the, that's the really the crux of what happens. And so we are trying to navigate where we how we can best serve each one of these, but all of these partnerships are really important to us. Um, and of course, it, I can't wrap it up in this picture, but all around this is the staff and the faculty and the students that, that are touched by all of the things that we are doing within these partnerships. So that's really important to us. Now we have guiding principles. And I tell you, our purpose is to provide exceptional guest customer service. These principles are the things to make sure this is what we do as we go through that. And one of them is first and foremost, human centered. Seems very wordy in some ways. You could just say, you know, it's the heart, it's the person. You know, someone standing in front, needs a question, has a need, we wanna help them. Um, we wanna make it simple and easy. You've heard that a lot of times. Um, you know, everybody likes to do things that are quick, easy, on my phone, in an app. Um, don't make me have to research and make it complicated because I got lots of things to do. We want to be action oriented, meaning we just don't want to say, yeah, we think that's okay. Or I'm not sure. We want to say, you know what? That's an excellent question. Let me help you find that answer. And we want to be action oriented to help you and also help others. 
So this is where all of the trend data that we get tells us, oh my gosh, maybe we need to explain a little bit more about spend authorizations or expense reports or um, how to put in leave or hire someone. We want our team to be knowledgeable. It's important that when you call that people know what's happening. And I know this is a pinch point right now. I'm just going to call it out that, you know, sometimes there's frustration when you call and somebody goes, I don't know. And you think you should know. Um, I am honored when I hear people say, oh, my gosh, we thought next was just going to be this land of experts. And I'm telling you, we'll get there. We're just not there yet. We started the same day everybody else did. um, But we're moving fast and furious to get as much as we can because we're listening. We're paying attention. We're measuring. Um, And we're coming to uh, events such as today to kind of share it so that you can share back with us. And then, of course, our guiding principle about guidance and partnerships is we need to be guides and good partners in this. We all have a common goal of one UCF. The only way we're going to get there is if we understand that we are all in this um, to try and help each other. So you've heard that phrase a lot about we're all in this together. It's not just that we're all in this together, but we're all in here to solve it. We're all in here to listen to it. And sometimes that causes friction. But I'm going to tell you that, you know, when you employ anything that's really innovative or creative, you're going to get creative tension. And as long as it's forward thinking, that's okay. Um, Nobody is upset that that happens, but we want it to be positive and solution oriented. So those guidance and partnerships principles for us are are important that we're listening and really representing, um, you know, the users of our system. Sherry's team has done a fantastic job of standing up this system, and they're going to continue to help us support it, as well as with our other IT partners, are going to help us support the system. We are kind of now, how do we operate in it? How do we manage it? Um, How do we govern it? Um, And how do we thoughtfully think how we evolve it? Um, We just don't want to be reactionary. We really want to go through it in a way that makes sense. So that's, sometimes that takes a little longer, but in the old adage of, you know, you measure twice and cut once, it's we want to make sure we're doing the right thing, but we don't want it to hold us up. So we, to speed the market is still going to be something we're going to consider. Now, when we think about our success, like how do we know we've done a good job? Um, Well, I'll tell you, the very first bullet here to me is everything relationship with campus, relationship with all of you. Um, If we don't have a good relationship, it doesn't really matter anything else we do. Um, We can have a pretty good employee experience. We can give you great customer service. Uh, We can try and process and innovate and continue to try and do really good things. But if we don't have a good relationship with you, some of that's for naught. So know that this is where the heart comes in. This is where we need your assistance. And I'll talk more about that in another slide, um, that we form a relationship. And a a good relationship has good communication. Um, And we have common goals and we have a common purpose. Um, And so uh, when we measure ourselves, we look at this to say, how well are we doing with the campus community? And then let's measure against, let's make sure we have a great employee experience. Let's make sure that um, great customer service, um, innovation and process excellence. I mean, it's important for us that we constantly innovate and think what's possible. To be number one or to be in the top tier of universities, you have to constantly kind of get out there first sometimes or at least get out there in the first few. And so when you do that, you forge a path and and that's bumpy. And we called it awesome bumpy when we were doing this work. So just know that we know that success is going to be bumpy. And then of course, digital first. Let's make it easy. I, I know I enjoy buying things on my app. I like making reservations on my app. So um, I know you, uh, not everybody necessarily wants to do it that way. And that's why we have a phone number to call um, when you need to talk to us. Now, of course, we have success pillars, but we also have metrics. How do we define how well we're doing? And then what do we measure? You know, you measure things that matter and you measure things that you can affect, that you can uh, uh, do something with. So I'm going to show you some of that data here in just a minute, but we, we talk about business processes, what's happening in the system, right? So like, how are things going in the system? We will, we, I'm telling you, it's not just checked every day. It's probably checked on the hour um, because we want to make sure that the system is stable. It's working. Um, and this is where we get a lot of information. Uh, the help cases, we want to see what's coming in. Where is it coming in? What kinds of things are people talking about? Uh, we read cases over and over. 
um, and say, oh my gosh, do we see a theme here? Is there a way we can get out front? We have a lot of people asking this question. And then we go into, um, you know, how can we get better communications or announcements? Of course, our knowledge-based views, the articles the team has created. We look at call volumes and timing, um, feedback themes, of course. And then everybody has said the lessons learned. You know, what are we hearing and what are we learning from that? Um, and we can't make decisions in a vacuum because we have to have a broader view. We just know this is our charge of what we're responsible for and what you have gifted us the responsibility to do. And so we will want to make sure that we come to you with, hey, this is what we're saying. Is that how you're feeling? And then we have this dialogue. And so that goes back to that relationship. So with that, let me show, well, let me walk through some metrics. I really like data a lot. So forgive me if I geek out a little bit on the next two slides. But to me, this is really a telling story. Um, so let's just start with the processes initiated. That's anything that happens in the system. There's been over 23,000 processes. Actually, that number is probably far greater than that because this was pulled two days ago. Um, and 78% of those processes have to do with time. Entering time, requesting time off, time, right? Should be no surprise to anybody. But when you think about all the pinch points, we're very fortunate that many of our pinch points are not within time. Now, yes, we have some geofencing questions. We have some questions about, I can't clock in, clock out on my app, but those are not necessarily as large as one might think. Um, they're actually, they're large, they're painful. No one wants to have to experience that, but people are able to successfully, 86% of our processes are successfully completed. As you can see by uh, business, by division, each one of the areas that have had successful completion. Excuse me. <coughs> Obviously, our student development and enrollment services is really doing quite a bit. Look at that, over 3,000. <coughs> and then if you want to know who other is, that's everybody else that's not listed, obviously. But everybody is fast and furiously working in a system, and the system is working as effectively as we need it to be. Of course, our known issues of security and Sometimes don't things don't route, route as they're supposed to, but it's routing. It's just maybe not routing the way we intended it to route. And those are the things that the Workday team is keeping an eye on so that we can make sure that um, we can get that fixed as quickly as possible. And this is where our shared partnership is in. Again, we see it, we feel it, we hear it in our different forms. And then we pass it on to say, hey, are you seeing the same thing? And can you help us get a resolution to some of the technology issues? Now, when we go to some of the other ways that people are um, using the system, um, we've had 3,700 help cases created. Um, that, again, two days ago. Uh, this continues. I look at it all the time. The lower left-hand corner chart, don't let that mislead you. You see a trending down chart. But in some ways, this is going to change over time because in the very beginning, we had a lot of backlog cases that we needed to put in. And so those were help cases. And so we kind of have a little bit of an inflation in the beginning, but we really are seeing an average of 200 or more a day. Yesterday, we had 286. So it's, we, we're seeing quite a few coming in. The average age of our cases are six days, meaning what that means is by the time it comes in to the time we have resolution is taking six days. Now, that's not necessarily where we want to be. We have a service level agreement in the system. Right now, we're not necessarily doing anything but just using it as a directional um, way of looking at it. What we really want to do is say, what is uh, normalized? And we need to get to a normalized place. And we probably won't get there until probably later in August, just because we have to get through all of the, the learning piece. As I reminded, as anxious as we are all to stabilize, we are still only three weeks old. And that's not very uh, sophisticated in the land of uh, software adoption. So um, know that everybody really wants to get this as stabilized as quickly as possible. But our longest age is 18 days. Now that includes weekends. So it's about 14 days. Many cases are still open as of July 1. And we're looking at every single one of them. Why? Where are they? What can we do? Is there something that's missing? Is there knowledge? Is a system issue? We want to get those resolved as quickly as possible because we know that's critical work that you're doing that you need to have processed as well. Um, we look over the customer care calls. You've seen a big drop in this. Now, uh, you know, the average call is about 10 minutes, uh, 52 calls a day on average. Um, we, uh, 
not really terribly surprised at the drop in calls, because if you look at the number below, when you see we've had over 15,000 views of our knowledge articles, we can kind of celebrate in some ways that the job aids, the tools, the resources that have been out there are useful. They're, they're clearly helping individuals figure out how to do it so they don't necessarily need to call, but know that we do have people there to call if you need assistance. <coughs> My apologies. Um, and if they can't, then a case is opened and then we work that from that end. So there's many ways that we look to ensure that people are getting assistance. If you're sending an email or sending a Teams chat, <coughs> that's great, but we really would love it if you would go in and create a help case. Um, I'm going to ask you that if you don't mind. If you do, if you sent me an email, I'd create a help case on your behalf because I want to be able to track it so that you know when it's complete and I can see what type of um, things we need to work on. Back up in the help cases, you can see the vast majority of our cases that have to do with travel expense and procurement. Money is, uh, is a big one for us. All right, so that gives us a lot of numbers. So my point is, is where do you wanna start? Um, where do you start when you say, I need help or I need to go someplace? Our website is a great place to go. Um, the, we have a team that looks at this to say, do we have all the right things out there? We can change the site in real time immediately. If we see something that needs to be added, a change, we wanted this site to be a resource for all of you. So we can make that in the moment. Obviously, there's a phone number you can call as well if you have another question. Um, and so when we think about knowledge articles, we're going to put them ease of use on their website. And many of them will link you to Workday so you can see where it is and what it's called. Or it may link you to another location on property um, or on campus that can point you in the direction to help answer your question. So if, if nothing else, bookmark it, knex.ucf.edu. This is a great place to go if you have any questions. Now, I got two more slides. My next slide is, I have to tell you, I've been with, uh, I joined UCF about eight weeks ago. And in my prior uh, work, I used to bring in research a lot and they would giggle because I was not working in higher education. And so to come in higher education and use something that I have found from a research piece of view kind of makes me smile because I always like to go back and look how, how have other people described what we're on. And I found this a shared services maturity model that was done by the University of Alberta. And I thought, my goodness, this is a perfect picture of where we are and where we're going and then kind of the describes it. And as you can see, we're at the embryonic stage of this shared services maturity model, because here we are in July 22, and you go, oh my gosh, are you telling me it's not going to be until 2024 that we're optimized? Well, yes and no. What that means is, is that we won't even have a second thought about what we're talking about today. We will have evolved so much in that time period. We will have had new releases come out. We would have learned some new things. We have new processes coming out. I have no doubt that once we stabilize ourselves, every one of you are going to come up with new ways of doing work that's going to help us. Um, so when you go to, you know, the emerging and you go, oh my gosh, now we're starting to do a leading and then we're getting established. So I just want to go ground everybody that, yes, we say we're on a journey. Let's just make sure that everybody understands what that journey is. And so this just gives you that depiction. Now, the last thing I want to leave you with is what can you do? Because I told you we're in a relationship. And so because we're in a relationship, I want to give you some things that you can help us with. One, use the system, read the articles, experience the process. You go in and use it so you can tell us what you experience. We know you're going to hear other people's experience. We don't want to discount that. But we also want to hear your firsthand experience. Um, that. The game of telephone of, I heard someone said something, said something, said something. We all want to advocate, but if it's not a first person user, it's kind of hard to disseminate what exactly the problem is I'm trying to solve. So I'm asking you, please use the system. Share your experience with us. We want to hear good and bad. Actually, we're, we're open to all of it because knowledge is a gift for us and feedback is a gift and we want to hear it. The next two things are coming soon, so be on the lookout for this. We're going to have next forums and exchanges where we're going to talk about what are we learning and when we want to hear from you. We're going to have very um, specific and targeted tasks and areas that we're going to discuss. And we want to like set up and we want to talk about maybe a process 
um, maybe the SOPs, the articles, or whatever's top of mind that's come up. We want to have those on a regular basis. So where the team is fast and furious putting the calendar together right now so that we can um, get those to you soon. We're also going to ask you to participate in experience surveys that we we need to get a pulse point of how everything is going. So you're gonna to start to see some emails that come out and I'm gonna ask you for your feedback. It's not gonna be lengthy, I promise. It is just gonna be a few questions, but I'm gonna encourage you and for you to encourage everyone else that utilizes um, Workday and Workday Help to please fill those out because this is another way for us to get your voice in here besides what you're giving us today. And then last, advocate for what is possible right? When you advocate for what's possible, what that means is that you're advocating to us of why can't we do this? But you're also advocating for everyone else to help think beyond today and think about tomorrow and advocate what, for the possibilities of how we're going to unleash this potential. So you all have a voice. You all have really smarts and intelligence. That's why you're here. Um, and so utilize that the best way you can. So that's what I'm going to ask for you to do. Okay. That's my slides. I've, co I've conveyed a whole lot. I don't know if you have any questions, but I know that Sherry or myself or any of the other speakers would be more than happy to answer any questions. So do we have any questions to respond to? We have a couple of nice notes. Um, uh, one says the Workday Help Team rocks. I would say, uh, yeah, that's good. And then, uh, and then kudos to the folks who are doing those drop-in sessions and the person and the people who made the call to do those. Um, it is a big time commitment to the SMEs, it totally is, but I think they, they find it valuable as they're uh, helping folks learn. So thank you for utilizing them and for that comment. Yes, thank you for that feedback. We love hearing that. It's nice because we can pass that on to our teams. Um, because, you know, they all want to do a good job for you as well. So it's nice to hear that. Um, and we will definitely pass that along. Are there any other questions? Anything that is lingering in someone's mind that they say, gosh, I, I have this audience and I really want to ask. Wow. Sherry, do you have any questions? <laughs> what's next, Kathleen? <laughs> what's next? <laughs> I don't know. What's next is what's possible. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I know that uh, we're, you know, the enthusiasm is there um, to try and uh, keep us moving in the right direction. I can tell you that. So, yeah, there is a lot of enthusiasm. And uh, I think folks are, excited but they're also a little bit fatigued and uh, that probably goes for our users as well as our um, as the teams who are supporting them so uh, really appreciate the feedback and um, i see another comment on those drop-in sessions so really we, we encourage you to attend those if you haven't uh, we are um, grateful to the folks who are facilitating those and and we're grateful to all of you for taking the time to learn, uh, use the tools, go to this website. I see one question that was just put in about um, to see a full workflow. Um, and we appreciate that piece of feedback. We were just talking about this morning in a meeting about how we can put together, um, forgive me for using the analogy, but it's like schoolhouse rocks, you know, how Bill becomes a law. Uh, understanding the, the true totality of something. So we are taking that back and saying, how can we potentially put something like that together? So thank you for that, um, that, that suggestion and feedback. And I know the drop-in sessions have been helpful. Thank you for going and attending um, and, and sharing that with folks. And I know that um, the, the team appreciate it too, because we think it uh, heads off some phone calls and emails and, and Teams chat, but um, we, we hope to continue those as much as we can. And Sharon asked, how do we get access to the drop-in sessions? I know the folks um, in the service center should have links to those uh, drop-in sessions. Um, they are 
tailored to the folks who work in the business centers. So um, just keep that in mind. And uh, Sharon, we can reach out to you directly and, and uh, get you the information you need. Um, okay, so we have two other questions. These are good ones. How long should you wait for a help ticket to be assigned for you? Say, well, <laughs> that's a great question. If you have concerns that your ticket is not being looked to, I can't uh, determine uh, the name here. Please reach out to me directly because I can investigate that for you to say where it is, because um, that will help me understand where it is in the process too. And then question about their analyst for the business. That's, a, that's an excellent uh, question, how we can align that. Maybe we'll take that on to show how we can uh, align to business centers, their central support and how we want to do that. Thank you for that suggestion. All right. Let's see here. Okay. Elizabeth, you know what? I might reach out to you separately um, on your ticket issue, but it really, if you have a ticket that was not resolved. So let me go back and investigate that and I'll be in touch with you separately to see if we can find out what's going on. Mm. Jay, thanks for that. Uh, Sherry, I, I think this is something probably we'll just take down as access security roles. Um, mm -hmm. Those will constantly be re-evaluated, not only from a business unit. So sometimes it's person specific, sometimes it's role specific. Right, so we will need to uh, take Jade's back and see. Mm -hmm. Jade, do you, have, um, do you have a help case submitted for that? I mean, I know um, if you do not, you might wanna have a help case submitted. So we can look into that. Yeah. And um, on the PO, uh, you know, again, Sandy, this is one of those, thank you for bringing it up. Um, it probably, it could take a few days to get one, but it shouldn't take that much longer. So if you're not getting anything, could, if you could reach out to me and let me know, because I can do a little investigation on my side to see where it might be. Um, it's possible that it's in the works, but I don't know. I won't know until I do a little bit of digging. Ah, okay. Yes, Jade, yeah, the, that is, that's correct. It's, it's based on security role, but we just have to investigate like what's the need. This is a good question to have um, uh, as us as a group to say security roles and evaluate that um, as we go through. I think that's part of what Sherry was talking about how we're gonna iteratively look and see how we evolve our system and our thinking for right now um, there were reasons why decisions were made. So I know that doesn't answer your question the way you wanted today, but. All right, just wanna make sure we're checking time. Any other questions? All right, well, it looks like we got quite a few. So I have, thank you for the homework. Um, I will definitely take these offline. I'll talk to a couple of Sandy and Elizabeth offline about um, your particular situations. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks everyone for being here. And thank you so much, Kathleen. Thank you. Thanks Sherry and Kathleen, and thank you all for attending. Amazing job, guys. Well done. Thank you. Go Knights. Charge on. That was terrific.